Wrestling is a young man's game as it relies on the creation of new stars and due to the physical nature of the job, wrestlers can only really go on so long before they begin to properly break down. Aging may slow down and eventually end careers, but there is always room for the legends of the game and sometimes stars in their 50s and 60s can make you believe that you are watching them in their prime by putting in a performance or a series of performances that belie their advancing years. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling and this these are 10 aging wrestling legends who turned back the clock. Join us. But before we start, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. We at Cultaholic truly believe that Nord is the best service of its kind. It's super easy to use, connect with one click, or enable auto connect for zero click connection, giving you the fastest possible speeds out there. The speed tests prove it. But Adam, why do I need NordVPN? I hear ya. Well, you can purchase subscriptions to video on demand services, websites, you can even get cheaper flight bookings by setting your virtual location to somewhere else in the world and saving heaps of cash. You will soon see that Nord pays for itself. But it doesn't stop there. Nord is a one-stop shop for all of your cybersecurity needs, protecting up to six of your devices from viruses, malware, hackers, personal data theft, intrusive ads, and so much more. I genuinely use Nord and I couldn't be happier with it. It's the equivalent of a cup of fancy coffee every month, which I'm sure you'll agree is a small price to pay for serious pieces of mind when it comes to all things digital. And there's even a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied, you get your money back. So grab your exclusive deal by heading to nordvpn.com forward slash cultaholic. The link is in the description below or use code cultaholic at checkout. Thank you. Number 10, Terry Funk. Terry Funk has been middle-aged and crazy, crazy like a fox, since the late 1980s, when he had something of a career revival thanks to a series of great feuds and matches in WCW. The Funker continued wrestling into his 50s and 60s, his frequent retirements coming to mean that he wouldn't wrestle until the next match came along. And it invariably did, because everybody loves Terry Funk, even if those bookings became less and less frequent as the man from the Double Cross Ranch decided to rest his battered body for longer periods of time. One of his most high-profile matches of the 2000s came at ECW's second one-night stand, where Terry teamed with Tommy Dreamer and Beulah McGillicutty to take on Edge, Mick Foley and Lita in a bout fought under extreme rules. Despite being 62 years old at the time, Funk gave it absolutely everything he had. He busted out some old favourite spots, bled, took a bump off a ladder, and even got tangled up in a barbed wire board for the cause. Number 9. Rob Van Dam. After Terry Funk rolled back the years at One Night Stand, Rob Van Dam experienced his crowning moment in the business when he beat John Cena to win the WWE title for the first and only time in the show's main event. About a year afterwards, Van Dam quit wrestling full time and decided to wrestle a reduced schedule going forward, which included spells on the indies in TNA and a WWE comeback in 2013. In the years that followed, RVD typically only wrestled a handful of matches and most of those flew under the radar. In June of 2022, however, RVD had his most highly publicized outing for a while when he flew to Japan for a six-man tag as part of the interpromotional Cyberfight Festival. The whole flipping show surprised everybody by doing some of his trademark high-risk offense, such as the split-legged moonsault and that spin kick from the ring apron to the guardrail with graceful ease. He showed that as well as not changing his look in almost 30 years, he still retains some of that old magic and shouldn't be written off even though he's in his early 50s. Number 8. Sting Wrestling fans were justifiably gutted when Sting announced his in-ring retirement while being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2016. It would be sad anyway, but the icon's WWE run had been a major disappointment on the whole, from his perplexing WrestleMania loss to Triple H to the devastating injury he suffered in his WWE title match with Seth Rollins. Fans were excited, but many expressed reserved optimism when Sting showed up in AEW in 2020. After all, the legend was now in his 60s, 
injuries had been on the shelf for several years and it was unknown just what he could do physically with his injury history. Turns out, he can do almost anything he wants, including continuously jumping off tall things and going through tables, if he fancies it. Sting has been genuinely fantastic since becoming All Elite, not only enhancing his own already legendary reputation, but doing much to elevate his opponents and the overall product. There's not actually one specific match to point to as evidence of him defying Father Time because it's all been pretty damn great and viewers are now conditioned to expect a lot when he steps through the ropes. Number 7. Christopher Daniels it's not like Christopher Daniels has the appearance of some beat-up old man or anything, the man clearly looks after himself and has aged remarkably well, but people tend to forget that he has been wrestling since the early 90s. Yes, the Fallen Angel has been at it for close to 30 years at this point and is in his early 50s. Signed to AEW, Daniels still wrestles, but his in-ring time has been limited of late as he focuses more on his duties as the head of the promotion's talent relations department. Still, when called upon, the former Ring of Honor world champion has proven that he can deliver the goods, as he did when he locked up with old foe Brian Danielson on the March 2nd, 2022 episode of Dynamite. This was the Fallen Angel's return bout after a spell away, and he demonstrated the fluid athleticism that has been a fixture of his long career. It may not have been on the level of what they were doing in Ring of Honor 20 years prior, but it wasn't too far off, and the pair worked a smartly paced and exciting match. Number 6. Ric Flair if it was up to Ric Flair, he wouldn't have retired from in-ring action in 2008. But the decision was taken out of his hands when Vince McMahon decided that enough was enough and it was time for one of the greatest of all time in the ring to hang up his boots for good. If he was going to old Yeller the Nature Boy though, Vince was at least going to give him a fitting swan song on the grandest stage and booked Flair's retirement match against Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 24. The 16-time world champion had been wrestling regularly since 2002, but his performance levels had been understandably inconsistent as he approached his 60s. Having his best match for a long time, Flair put in one hell of a shift and he and the Heartbreak Kid took fans on a genuine roller coaster of emotions. Was it perfect? No, not by any means, but the drama was real and the dirtiest player in the game was able to call time on his full-time in-ring career with a match to remember. Number 5. Goldberg Goldberg has had his critics since coming back to WWE in 2016. Originally brought in for a one-off fantasy rematch with Brock Lesnar, done in large part to promote that year's 2K video game, demand stuck around for six whole years after, to, shall we say, very mixed results. His WrestleMania 33 showdown with Lesnar was a belter and it was funny seeing him steamroll through Dolph Ziggler, but his dream match with The Undertaker was a living nightmare and his universal title victory over The Fiend rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. Just when it felt like a sizable majority of fans were sick and tired of seeing Goldberg's intermittent returns, he pulled it out of the bag and changed some minds with his performance against Bobby Lashley at 2021's Crown Jewel. Even though he went into the match with a knee injury, Goldberg moved around very well and he and Lashley had a match that was genuinely very enjoyable and a marked improvement on their SummerSlam encounter. Goldberg himself agreed, bragging that his Crown Jewel performance finally shut all those up. Charming. Number 4. Dustin Rhodes Dustin Runnels as Goldust was noticeably phased out toward the end of his last WWE run and was rarely given an opportunity to prove that he could still go. Evidently frustrated by this, Runnels asked for his release in order to join brother Cody in the fledgling All Elite Wrestling. The first order of business in AEW was a major pay-per-view match with the American Nightmare as the siblings attempted to make right the botch job from 2015 when Cody was wrestling as Stardust and the two underwhelmed so so badly at Fastlane that a WrestleMania rematch was taken off the table. In his first outing in over a year following double knee surgery, Dustin had the match of his life at AEW's inaugural Double or Nothing extravaganza. Clearly out to prove a point and steal the show, Dustin, who had turned 50 years old just six weeks before, gave every last ounce of himself in the ring as well as about two pints of blood. Not only match of the night, but Dustin vs Cody was also one of the best of the year and remains one of the best in AEW's short history too. Number 3. Steve Austin Austin. Steve Austin didn't really have a say in whether or not he had to retire following his loss to The Rock at WrestleMania 19. The Texas Rattlesnake had been bumping on borrowed time ever since getting spiked on his head at SummerSlam 1997, the neck fusion surgery he underwent two years later only buying him a little longer in the squared circle. 
By the time he rode off into the sunset, Austin not only had a knackered neck, but dodgy knees and bad back issues too. He may have retired a very wealthy man and been brought back for the occasional on-screen role like hosting or a spot of guest refereeing, but Stone Cold has always been a wrestling fan and the itch to return to the ring still scratched away at him. Though it wasn't advertised as a match ahead of time, it was widely known that Austin would be getting physical with Kevin Owens at WrestleMania 38. In front of a packed house in the Lone Star State, the bionic redneck did not disappoint a soul who had been waiting for him to get back in the ring for the first time in almost 20 years. Oh, heck yes. Number 2. Genichiro Tenryu Genichiro Tenryu was one of the biggest stars in Japan during the 70s and 80s. Winning umpteen titles and putting on countless classic matches for all Japan, Tenryu became regarded as not only one of the country's biggest stars, but one of the best workers in the world for that era. He was also good value in the 90s when he still wrestled, but also focused his efforts on promoting his Super World of Sports and Wrestle Association R promotions. He returned to all Japan after a decade away and as he was ostensibly entering the winter of his in-ring career. The company was on its knees after the defection of most of the roster who had left to form Pro Wrestling Noah. Tenryu's return was a business boost, but he wasn't coming back just to be a simple nostalgia act. Not only did he win his second and third triple crowns, but he also had what Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer called the best match of 2001, when he dropped the belts to Keiji Muto. The two went hammer and tong for close to 20 25 excellent minutes, captivating a sold-out Budokan Hall. Number 1. Ricky Steamboat Ricky Steamboat was still routinely putting on bangers with the likes of a not-quite Stone Cold Steve Austin and even his old rival Ric Flair when he went down with a serious back injury in the summer of 1994. Forced to retire from in-ring competition, the dragon pretty much disappeared from the business altogether, save for the occasional guest appearance for promotions like Early Day TNA and Ring of Honor. He then then became a road agent and trainer for WWE before getting the urge to wrestle once again. A pitched bout with Flair at WrestleMania 22 was shot down, but WWE were happy to let him work at the Showcase of the Immortals three years later. Teaming with Jimmy Snooker and Roddy Piper the night after he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, Steamboat hadn't lost a step as he and Chris Jericho put together a gripping finishing stretch to the three-on-one handicap elimination match. The veteran busted out top rope moves, skinned the cat, and had the crowd biting on every false finish before ultimately succumbing to the codebreaker. Steamboat was also the star of a 10-man tag on Raw the night after, and had a blinder with Jericho at Backlash a month later. 